Didn't see you there. Today, we're going to be talking about the wonderful mathematical object that is matroids. Let's get started. So, this last quarter, we've been living inside the little, little bubble of graphs. But it turns out there's a more general object that graphs are a part of, and those are matroids. And what's the connection? Well, the matroids are an abstraction of linear dependence. So it won't surprise you to learn that another thing in this little space are vector spaces. So the concept of a matroid was introduced actually in 1935 by a man named Hassler Whitney. And just like a graph, a matroid is defined in terms of a set system. Right? For a graph, we have a set of vertices and a set of edges. That's how we define the graph mathematically. A matroid is a ground set labeled with E and a family of sets, script I, that we call the independent sets of the matroid. So let's jump into the, into the definition and we're gonna stick with matroids that come from graphs and those are called graphic matroids. So the formal definition of a matroid is that E, a finite set, and I, a family of subsets. Of E. We say that I are the independent sets of a matroid if the following hold the first is that our family of independent sets is not empty. That would be stupid. The second axiom is that if we have an independent set in our family and another, in, uh, another set that's a subset of that set, then we know automatically that that subset is also in our family of independent sets. Seems pretty straightforward, right? The third axiom may seem a little convoluted, but it really isn't that difficult. And it says if we have two independent sets in our family, and J is larger than I, then there exists an element that's in J but not I, such that that element, X, can be added into our smaller independent set, I, and that new set is also in our family. So, Let's give an example of how we would look at a graph as being a matroid. Let's take this relatively simple graph here, the Big Dipper graph. And in, for matroids, we're gonna label the edges. And like I said early, earlier, matroids are an abstraction of linear dependence and if we recall from linear algebra, linear dependence is when we have a non-trivial linear combination of vectors that sum to zero. So equivalent, equivalently, in a graph, 
we're going to define a dependent set as being a cycle in the graph. And that kind of makes sense because if you follow the edges of the cycle, you're also going to get back to your starting, your reference point, your zero maybe you would like to call it. So for a graphic matroid, we'll label this MG, this is the graph G up here, right? Our ground set is the set of edges. And our independent sets are going to be the independent sets in the graph, meaning they're acyclic sets. Acyclic sets of edges. Another way you could say this is they're the forests of the graph. So that's how we would define a graphic matroid on a graph. And that's why all graphs are, in fact, also matroids. This matroid, defined in this way, where the independent sets are acyclic sets of edges, or the forests of the graph, is going to give you a graphic matroid. And it turns out that this matters because you can often get very uh, some some basic results pretty easily proved using matroid theory that take a lot more paper room when you're proving with graphs. And I just give quickly as an example, I'm going to show you this proof. That's from a common matroid book. And it's the proof of Euler's polyhedra formula, V minus E plus F equals 2, which is pretty common. And you'll notice I've added some parenthetical remarks in here that tell you how it corresponds in a graph. But without those, this is an extremely short proof and much shorter than you would need if you were proving it just with graphs.